By the time we came here, it was a completely thick bush. Complete, in fact, I used one of my vehicles to, to highlight this route. This very one we are standing on. I used my 505 to, to make it. Now we came in, we started moving here gradually. I moved in, I moved in in the year 2000, 2000 precisely. In fact, at that time you could not even come out by 6 o'clock because if you ever dared it, they will attack you at night. In its bid to carry out its primary responsibilities by providing adequate housing structures for Nigerians, the federal government in the 80s allocated a site and services scheme to citizens capable of acquiring needs. When the architectural master plan of the federal site and service scheme Idimu in the Sherry Olofin area of Lagos State was carved out in the late 80s, it was a beautiful city to behold on paper. Concrete work formations on the large expanse of land, demarcating residential area, social service center, and industrial orb connecting road networks showed another potential modern city like Ikoyi and Ikeja government residential areas. But it was a dream that would not come through. The relocation of the federal seat from Lagos to Abuja in 1991 was sufficient to stall the project midway into completion. A visit to the site by Lagos Community Updates showed concrete markings that have survived till date. But years of abandonment made the area worse than it was for neighboring residents. It was a gory picture of how distant the federal government could be from its people. The land were given to us since 1992. And the, what government told us when they were allocating this land to us was this, there's going to be site and the services. And we all know, understand what services mean. The electrification, the road, water, drainages, and elect uh, electricity. But unfortunately, there was nothing on ground. We've written several letters because we paid tenants, uh, tenement rate, grant rent, and we pay every other levy to the government. Still, nothing has been done. But despite this neglect, the community through their collective will to survive took the bull by the horns. The need to make life meaningful for themselves became a special project to the Graceland Estates Community Development Association. All that happened is contribution here and there, you know, to keep the, you know, CDA moving. And that's how it has been like that. But then I can tell you that there's been tremendous improvement, safe effort. There's been tremendous improvement. All everything we have here is a communal effort. The electricity, the drainages, the, the coverts, and the, uh, all the little amenities we could get here. It's all by communal effort. We've been able to do our road. We grade the road. We do the mapping of the road out. Then we've done the drainages. We fix uh, the electrification. The, we have three transformers we bought by ourselves. All the wiring, all the, the street lights was done by us. Every other thing that you can see that makes life conducive, we are the ones that have been doing it. With over 400 houses and about half a million residents, coordinating financial activities in this elitist environment is not a child's play. Our engineer went away with our money, 1.6 million naira. <laughs> went away with 1.6 million naira, we, we couldn't even trace him. It took us about seven years. It was seven years after he went away or dared about that. Somebody discovered him at, Ala, at K2. That's why we got him arrested and detained him at Alausa police station. So now it took us time to convince people to come back again. At the end of the day, they came back. We were able to re-energize and we started the project. For those who have not paid, yes, the tax force has been there to coax people, which I don't see. Why should an adult be coaxed to do his responsibility? For me, that's how I see it. An adult should not be forced to do what he ought to do. I mean, quite a lot of people are aware that the security you engage here are paid. People cry, insecurity, insecurity. Okay, 
How are you going to cop that? Except you engage people to do it. And who, how do you get them paid? But with over 15 culverts constructed, three new electric power transformers, regular grading of the roads amounting to over 100 million naira, claiming ownership of this self-help project is the song on the lips of many. We pay to maintain the transformer, we pay to buy the poles, we pay to get the wiring done. All these are personal efforts of the community. Unfortunately, erosion is not also helping us. Every year, like I said earlier, in January alone, we spent over three million to fix the road, do grading yearly. That's what we spent in doing the roads. Keying into the Ambodies administration's policy of empowering the CDAs, Graceland Estate community leaders are calling on corporate organizations to lock around and capitalize on the opportunities to add value to human lives. The government should come to our aid. You see, that is just that. That we know they can do it, they have the ability and the capacity to do it. They've been doing it. I've seen it across the states, all over the states. I'm using this opportunity to appeal to the governor. Kindly help us. We are suffering in this place. We need your attention. We voted for you. We love you. And why governor Ambode can do it because with what he has been doing since he came in, he has been a responsive governor and I know he can do it.